Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Command in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Black Sales episode review right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. And as always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Black Sales episode review, and this is my review of Season 1, Episode 3. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. Once again, pretty good episode this week. I especially liked in this episode, uh, I think more so than the previous two, how this episode seemed to highlight uh, the characters' strengths and weaknesses, some of their key characteristics and traits, which I'll get into more detail about later on in this review. But that, that, that was the, the overall like best thing I think this episode did really well with. So, all right, let's talk about what went down in this week's episode. So pretty much the the bulk of this week's plot is uh is pretty much the uh, the consolidation of personnel for the hunt for the uh, orca. We have uh, we have Flint and his crew already deciding that of course they're going to need another ship. They're going to need another crew in order to take down the orca. But I like how Flint was smart enough that instead of just immediately teaming up with another crew and another captain, so on and so forth, how he wanted to put one of his own men in charge of that consort. And of course, his quartermaster Gates was number one at the top of the list. Um, and, and I thought and I thought that was really smart. Thought that was thought that was very smart. And I also like how Remember, you, you guys will remember that I ended last week's review talking about the uh, the proposed partnership between the crew of the Wars and the crew of the Ranger. I like how they didn't immediately jump to that point. That it wasn't just, okay, yeah, let's just go ahead and let's get, you know, let's just do that. Let's pit these uh, rival crews against each other. Instead, throughout this episode, we saw all the steps it took. For them to finally get to that point where it's like, okay, we have to team up with the crew of the Ranger. And I like how, although, you know, between Gates and Jack, and then of course when they had to sit down, how it's this whole going back and forth, this reasoning of terms, this, you know, negotiation and whatnot. At the end of the day, it was still a last resort. So... So and, and I and I gotta applaud them for taking the time to develop that instead of just jumping to that point. It's like no, let's make let's make this clear. Let's establish that this is a last resort, but we're going to hide it under the facade of oh we're so clever to come up with this arrangement on our own type thing. Not necessarily, not necessarily. And the and that I'm going to speak about in even more detail when I get back to you know the character traits and things of that nature that I want to discuss later in the review. So, uh, so anyway, so throughout the course of the episode, while the major, the major uh, action is all about that consolidation of personnel, the subplots we got working, we got John pretty much, uh, pretty much trying to at least get a foothold in the crew, you know, trying to, uh, just trying to find, you know, a safe spot within the crew, and he does a, and he does a, a great job at going about it. Um, how how he's decided to kind of side himself with Billy, and how he's he's all like I, like I mentioned in last week's review, he's already starting to play crew members against each other, you know, for for his own benefit. Um, and I, and and once again, I like how it's not it's not you know um, it is clever and it is scheming scheming but it's not conniving it's not backstabbing and he's not doing it out of selfish gain it's all out of a necessity for survival so i, I and, and i like how that played out let's see um oh and then of course this episode introduced this whole mystery of uh, mrs barlow uh a character the new character we're introduced in this episode which in all honesty, I'm not sure what to make of that at all. Um, because immediately, you know, when we saw her at the end of last week's episode, my first thing was, oh, that must be his wife. Or at least a relative. But now we're starting to think that, well, we know that, number one, Mrs. Barlow is an alias. That's not her real name. Apparently, her real name is Mrs. Hamilton. And number two, we know that there is some type of, there, there's some mystery, there's some intrigue behind her relationship with Flint because and, and, and apparently this is a it's sort of a 
a hush hush hearsay pray tell type of a uh, thing it, it, it's not really a secret because we know that the pastor that she speaks with um, in the episode he's somewhat aware of it and we know that one of the uh, crew members that's still loyal to Singleton on the Warriors knows about it so I, I, I don't really know what to what to make of that um, I will say though the second they the second we saw the name Hamilton the first thing I thought of was was that the name of the captain of the ship that they commandeered in the premiere you know the guy who had the uh, who had the schedule that, that that's what because because I don't remember what that captain's name is but that's what I thought it was when I first saw that now now I'm not too sure but that would have been very intriguing if in fact that was the captain's wife because then that would have meant that Flint captured her and is holding her hostage until yeah until he lands the orca pretty much um yeah, yeah, that would that would have been very uh very interesting. A very interesting twist. So anywho, so let's see, uh Alright, yeah, so let, let, let me go ahead and jump into uh the topic I brought up earlier about how I said this episode does a good job at highlighting, you know, the characters strengths weaknesses and and you know their key traits how they really seem to come out in this week's episode and this is what i mean first off let's talk about the crew of the wars now of course we got flint that we know is the you know the uh the strong silent type if you will the um the one who's always you know in thought always maneuvering always trying to you know picture what he's going to do next and for the most part he for the most part he does hold that up in this week's episode because there are multiple points where uh where flint is pretty silent on a couple of things and then there's some where he he speaks his mind but then that that's been established from jump street that when flint opens his mouth he means what he says and he says what he means and everything he says is with a purpose and to a point so uh and i thought that was great like the the whole sit down scene when gates had to had to take him outside twice because of some stuff he said to to vane Oh man, that 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 was hilarious, especially the second time because we don't even see that argument. We just see uh we just see Eleanor, Jack, and Vane just like chilling in the meeting and you you can hear Gates shouting in the background. That that had me in stitches. That was hilarious. So uh and then of course, you know, uh Flint's uh, stubbornness. We saw that at his immediate turndown of uh of the of the of the notion that he would even team up with Captain Vane and the crew of the Ranger because even when he was talking with Gates about it even in a hypothetical he's like even if I would consider it is and I'm not going to consider this but so on and so forth so um oh and then of course like I said you know the the whole mystery you know the fact that Flint is the silent um the silent uh thinking type you know what I mean just that whole mystery about Mrs. Barlow and the fact that Flint never comments on it. He never says anything about it. That that all kind of, you know, ties into his legend, which we heard some more about when uh, Billy and John were talking about what some of the crew members said about Flint. Some of the ghost stories they were talking about. Um, so I like how they did all of that. Uh, but... In regards to his crew, now let's talk about Gates, because I was actually surprised with what they did with Gates with uh, this episode because yeah Gates does continue to be you know the uh, the conciliary if you will the voice of reason the one who's always out for Flint's best interest and you know of course we saw that reinforced throughout this episode but the one thing I wasn't expecting is the introduction of Gates in security about his age and the you know the 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 second he doubted himself being able to captain another crew because of his age. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. And granted, I should because it is common um, in these types of stories with those types of characters, um, especially when they're surrounded by their, you know, their, uh, you know, younger peers. But, um, but yeah, I thought that was very interesting. And that how Gates, you know, he... He didn't try to deny it. He didn't try to argue it or anything. He immediately knew. It's like, yeah, I'm too old for this. We we need a younger guy 
you know, at the helm of that second crew. You know, we need we need someone that could that could you know last the fight. So I, I thought that was very interesting. Um, and then to wrap up my discussions about the crew of the wars, like I said, John is, is, is you know he he's been doing what he's been doing from Jump Street, you know, uh, and and and, I, and I'm and I'm loving Silver. I love his character. Every time he's on screen, I smile. But Billy, Billy is uh, once again reinforcing that that stance that Billy is the Billy. I would say is probably the most loyal member of that crew because his allegiance does not lie with Flint or with Gates. It lies with the crew. And even though Billy has already done um, questionable things and he questions those things himself, once again, did it at the beginning of this episode, it's, it's always been because he is out for the crew's best interest. Cr Billy is the one character, I think, out of the entire cast where the idea that um, that the well-being of the whole greatly out, you know, greatly uh, outvalues or outweighs the the uh, well-being of an individual. I think Billy embodies that better than any other character in this cast. Um, and 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 I like that that I, and I like that about her. That that that's one of the main reasons why I like Billy so much. You know what I mean? And I could easily, but but I do want to draw this comparison early on because I don't know if they'll go this route. Actually, I. I I have some uh, some reserved thoughts about Billy that I don't want to speak into existence, but I could easily see them setting some type of a uh, character arc with Billy, where over time we see him become more like Gates, where because we've already seen that established where Gates is somewhat of a mentor figure for Billy, but the idea that Billy is for the most part, you know, the straightforward loyal idealist. And I could see that over time he'll have to he'll have to do more questionable things. He'll have to do things that he normally wouldn't do for the greater good. You know, that whole ends justify the means type of thing. And that over time he'll find himself more like Gates, where Gates is of that same mindset, but he won't hesitate to to do something that he doesn't necessarily agree with if it's if it's, you know, uh if it's going, to, if it's going to benefit them in the long run, he he at the drop of a dime, he won't hesitate at that. And I could see Billy turning into more of that character. So, uh, let's see. Now I want to talk about the crew of the Ranger. Um, I was actually impressed with Vane in this episode, especially and 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 to 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 quote him when he says, "Are you as surprised as I am?" When he's talking to Eleanor during the sit down, he says, "Are you as surprised as I am that I'm the one?" on my best behavior and that's true because I think this episode we finally saw the side of Vane that I think uh, that, that I really think will pay off for him uh, later on in the series how he has actually reserved himself more in this episode he's not just you know the straight up uh, hot head short tempered you know loud mouth brute that we've been led to believe up to this point. He actually has taken the time to actually sit back, sort of, you know, monitor things, kind of kind of uh, go along with the flow, if you will. Um, I, I, to be honest, I think he took a, I think he took a page straight out of Flint's book, to be honest with you. Well, no pun intended, page out of the book, did what I did there. No pun intended, but, uh, but I like that, that, you know, uh, that Vane actually took the time to do that. I also like how we, did sort of kind of see more of a compassionate side of him especially when we found out that uh he had captured max and had turned her over to his crew but remember what he did before the climax of this episode yeah you could go ahead and say oh no because he still captured her and you know gave her to the crew and they beat and raped her and stuff like that but remember what they did before the climax he told jack to set her free and to do it at night, in private, keep it quiet so that nobody knew about it. And he acknowledged, he acknowledged, he wanted to know, it's like, Eleanor offered to protect you. None of the, I, could, I couldn't touch you if you would have went ahead and stayed in her care, but you didn't. And why? And he wanted to know the reason. And I think what it was, was that he found some type of uh, constituency with Max because they've both been hurt by Eleanor. 
They've both been uh, romantically involved with her and they've both been hurt by her. So, like I said, I might be giving him too much credit, but I'm not going to ignore the fact that he did offer to let Max go. You got to give him that. He's he's not exactly the, you know, the, the sick brute we've been led to believe. And Jack, oh, dude, Jack, I, I don't know if I said it in a, um, in a review yet, but I've said it every episode I've watched so far. Jack is the little finger of this series. For any of you all who watch Game of Thrones, Jack is the little finger of this series. Time and time again, he's the grand schemer. He's the grand manipulator. And you could see very easily how he's able, you know, he, he's a puppet master. He can get people to do what he wants by pulling their strings, by saying what he knows is going to get into him. Look how easily he got Gates to second guess taking over another crew. Look how easily he got Vane to coincide with the sit down and trying to go ahead and team up with Flint. You see it time and time and time and time again. Jack is able to, to pull those strings, man. And he, and he, the ace of spades, man. The ace of spades. That's, that's the best way I can describe him. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep my eye on that motherfucker though. I don't trust him for a minute. I don't trust him for a minute. And, and Vane even says in this episode, he says, you're too, you're too clever for your own good, Jack. Too clever for his own good. Um since I since I brought up Max, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about her, cause uh cause I'm surprised I, I, I'm, I'm surprised just how much of an extreme they've done with Max. She is a very defiant character. She does not shit, she might she might be more stubborn than than Flint of Ain. She she doesn't compromise, especially if she feels like she's been spited. She does not compromise at all. Um, for better or for worse, man, she sticks by her fucking guns. When she says she's going to do something, she doesn't. And she follows through with it. Ain't no fucking short guess. Ain't no second guessing. Ain't no backing out of it. And, uh, and yeah, and we saw that when, when Eleanor tried to help her. And she was like, nope. Cause, 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 cause I, I offered you to come with me and you, you spat in my face. So no, this, you know, Vane didn't do this to me. You did this to me. The, you, you go ahead and you, you pay the consequences for your actions because, you know, you, you made your bed. Now you're lying. It. Read what you sold, man. So, uh, I really, I really don't know what's going to happen with Max. I don't know where they're, what, what they're going to do with her. Um, cause I'll be honest with you. I thought after last week's episode, Max was going to be that character that kind of disappears for a while and then resurfaces later on down the line, but uh, but now she's still there. She's still around, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know where this is going to play out. And now I got to talk about Eleanor, cause ooh, I, I I think Eleanor is going to turn out to be our our tragic character in this story. And the reason why I say that is because Eleanor, God, that woman will cut off her nose to spite her face. So, oh man, 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 man! I, I, I just don't know what she's doing anymore. It seems like, it seems like, Eleanor is. I can't, I can't really say she's making hard decisions, and shit's not really panning out for her, because, just like Flint, just like Van, just like Max. She compromises, but it is always for selfish reasons. She's not a selfless character at all. You know, she is very much of the mindset where she's out for hers. But you, I can't really feel sorry for her when the shit backfires in her face. Because it's like Max said, all of this stuff happens, you know, it, it's her. It, it, she kind of brings it on herself. And the reason for that is because she's so goddamn prideful. She really is. Look, look, look at the way she talked to her dad, right? Look at the way she so easily, so easily fell right back into Vane's lap, liter quite literally, and then had the audacity to kind of turn around and take his crew right from under him because of what they did with Max when 
she was the one that caused that to begin with because had she gone off with Max, that never would have happened. And yeah, you could go ahead and argue, say, well, Max was the one who, uh, who you know, left Eleanor's uh, protection, but Eleanor didn't give her a reason to stay. She didn't. And then the thing is, Vane said it in the meeting. Jack said it in the meeting. You know, when they went ahead and they set up the uh, the partnership between the Warriors and the Ranger, Jack said, what's to prevent you from pulling this deal right from under us next time you get pissed off at Vane? And she said, oh, I won't do that. But you saw she took his crew right from under him because she got pissed off at what he did with Max. You saw it happen. She went on, she turned around, went against her word. So now, once again, there's going to be consequences and repercussions for that action. And I can't help, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, whoa, oh, whoa, is Eleanor. No, because Eleanor is too, she's rash and she's prideful. And that's a bad fucking combination because she doesn't take the time out to really think about the ramifications of her actions, but yet she's so goddamn prideful that she won't even admit when she's wrong. Well, if that's the case, sweetie, then you gotta go ahead and fucking, you, you gotta go ahead and just suffer the consequences, cause, cause, cause it's you. The problem isn't anyone else or the world or your position or anything like that, it's you. You're, she is constantly making things harder on herself and you can see that when uh, when she's talking to her uh when she's talking to her number two, he he's the one telling her all the time, don't do this, don't do that, this is why, and you should listen to me. And time and time and time again, we see her ignore his advice. Pretty soon he's gonna be like, you know what, fuck this, I'm out. Cause it, it, it it's pointless to listen to somebody who won't listen to reason. So when when and if that happens in this series, I won't blame him at all. Cause Eleanor, she's fucking digging her own grave. She really is. I tell you this though, she better wise the fuck up, or she's gonna find herself sleeping with the fishes. Simple and plain. So I'm done talking. Anyway, so all in all, that's gonna uh, that's gonna wrap up this week's review. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. And in the comments below, let me know your thoughts, not just on this week's episode, but let me know what you guys think about the characters uh, in the story so far. Let me know some of your favorites, some of your least favorites. I tell you, there's not a single character on the show that I dislike at this point. I pretty much like every character. I'm not crazy about Eleanor's dad, but then again, they haven't done enough with him yet in the story for me to really form uh, a, a, a real honest opinion I mean he just you know he just comes across as the sort of uh, the sort of fashionable you know the sort of fashionable uh, rich prick but uh, but I don't think we I mean we know more we know we know more of him than we really know about him if that makes sense you know you know what I'm saying um, we know more about his reputation and about his persona and how characters perceive him, but we don't really know him as a character yet. So, um, but other than that, like I said, every other character on this show, I fucking, I love. It, this, this is great TV. So anyway, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, brief update. What to keep an eye out for later this weekend. Tomorrow, I'll have my Sons of Anarchy Season 6 review up. Monday will be my Legend of Korra Season 2 review. And unfortunately, looks like I'm going to have to cancel the uh, month of Miyazaki for this week. And that's because it looks like my schedule is just not going to allow it. Not the way I want to do it anyway. And I don't really feel like doing half half-ass reviews. For those movies, because the movies I got planned to review, I got to rewatch, but I don't even have time in my schedule to go back and revisit those reviews. And I'm not going to sit here and struggle to try to do it off memory when I should have the time to go back to that material, but it, it, I just don't. And yeah, and it pisses me off to high heaven that I don't have that time. I should have it, and I want that time back, but. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to get an attachment about that. Anyway, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.